I didn't know anybody in the Belarusian diaspora except for the, by the mid 90s, I knew the editor of the Belarusian Review who used to live in Los Angeles, a guy called Joe Artuch. And he and I would, would converse quite a lot on the phone. Um, I knew uh, Jan Zaprudnik. He used to work at Radio Liberty and he was probably the leading figure in the diaspora in the 1990s. Um, I met him on several occasions, but I wouldn't say that there were mass occasions, you know, where you get a big group of people or a big lecture hall or something like that. Whereas I was always meeting Ukrainians in Detroit, Toronto, wherever, Philadelphia, um, got to know many people really well in that period after Chernobyl, especially late 80s and 90s. Um, Belarusians now, even now, I know the diaspora now. But, you know, the diaspora is fairly divided. You know, surprise, surprise, the diaspora divided, right? And there aren't many of them. So it really can render them a little bit ineffective. They've come into their own more recently since the protests after the last election. And I've now attended several events hosted by diaspora organizations in Belarus. Um, and I've been to the London headquarters of um, Belarusians in the United Kingdom uh, they have a nice library there, they have a church, and they have quite a few functions. It's a fairly active society, I would say. And some of the people in that society have produced the Journal of Belarusian Studies, which is, um, you know, it's quite a good journal. I think, it, you know, by any standards, it's quite a good journal. It's not linked to an academic institution, but nevertheless, it has fairly high standards. So it's on a different level, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm.